What's going on guys, it's Don over at Easy Button REI and REI Automation. We're going to be talking on the simple CRM and how to request the free CRM through our website. And so if you see here, we're over at Easy Button REI. When you get to the main web page, you can go to the uh, services offered up here at the top and then come down to CRM. And once you're there you'll be able to click on the simple CRM button which will allow you to sign up for the free tools course so click on this button once you've signed up for the free tools course you'll come up and come down to the middle part you can see here's the free tools course come down to the CRM section right here make it simple CRM Come down, go through these videos, and then walk through the requesting of the free CRM, what you need to submit to support, and that'll get them to where they're running uh, the setup. And once they've set you up with a workspace uh, by following these steps, they'll go ahead and set that up typically within 24 to 48 hours. And once they're done, they remove support member out of the workspace. And at that point, it is your workspace to do with what you want. You'll be an admin. It'll be your workspace on your free Podio account or whatever Podio account you have us add it to. Uh, at any point in time, if you're ready to upgrade off of the simple CRM, which does not have any automation, you can upgrade to the Beast Mode platform. That's going to have the full automation with drip follow-up with RVM and text message capabilities, as well as bringing call rail tracking numbers and stuff like that automatically in when sellers call. Uh, some of those different uh, KPI tracking your numbers, things like that, it all automatically happens within this platform for beast mode. But if you're just getting started, Simple CRM will get you what you need. It'll have actually a database for you to track your numbers. And this is what it looks like. So once you have the workspace set up, you'll have these different apps set up at the top. And you'll be able to put in your seller's information in the property lead app. Your cash buyers will go here, obviously your network or contacts, that's typically gonna be things like title agents, attorneys, real estate agents, and anyone you meet kind of in the industry there. Uh, if you have campaigns and you wanna track how your campaigns are doing, the campaign tracker is a good app for that. That's gonna be things like direct mail, bandit signs, ringless voicemail, things like that. You'll be able to input numbers of how many items or how many opportunities did you have on your list, and then you can always tag it in here, and I'll show that in a second. And then team members is simply putting yourself and or if you have acquisition disposition type people you can put them in here if you have a va or leads manager putting them in here allows them to tag themselves against uh, the items that are here in the property app last thing is going to be the incoming calls for sellers and buyers this is typically an app where we bring in all of our calls so the easy way to use this is the email to app function so if i click on this and you'll be able to click the wrench and get an email address for this app. Go email to app. And then this email address right here, you'll be able to copy that. And if you have CallRail or Google Voice or any of those types of providers, you can go into like CallRail, you can go down to manage account. And then when you click on your users over here, you can create a user and you would basically say notification user and then you would go ahead and put that email address for that app and set up the notifications uh, for the calls. So anytime somebody calls, it would automatically come into uh, the incoming calls app. And then if it turns into something that you wanna create or add an item in the property app, you could do that based off of that. But this would allow you to have all your calls kind of in one spot from either Google Voice, Boxer, or Vumbra, I should say, or CallRail, or any type of platform that you're using, you could bring them into there. Now, as far as the property app, that's where you're gonna have your seller's information, property information, any appointment, offer, contract, any of your notes would be tracked there as well. So you can see here, you're just putting in seller's information, their phone and email, date that you created it, whoever's the lead manager, if you have one, this is linked to your team member app, so they'd be able to pick their name right there. As you're making outbound calls, you can pick what number so you know how many times you've attempted. And then your next action. This lets you know kind of what's going on with it, what's happened to it, whether it's in due, due diligence, um, if you've set an appointment or put it into follow-up, if it's been referred out to an agent. Appointments, offers, and contracts, you can see that lets you know kind of what the status is of it. And then if you are putting it into follow-up or you want to call them another time, you can put them in as a next contact date and it'll show up on one of the views that I'll show you here in a second. 
Once you put in the property information, you can see here it's bringing back some of the stuff from Google. You can fill out the different property information down here, uh, some of the stats on that property so you have it for later. And then once you set the appointment, you can put in the date of appointment, who's going, who set it, things like that. If you use the disk profile to kind of figure out what type of person they are so you know going into the appointment, if you're dealing with somebody that needs a lot of data or somebody that wants to just talk, whatever the case may be. Uh, these links here, we typically just put in a Dropbox link or a YouTube link, and it can be Google Images or any other type of image uh, area as well. It doesn't have to be Dropbox, but they're linked right there to your photos or video walkthrough. When you make an offer, what's the expiration date, who made it? These links, when you fill up the map address, these links are automatic uh, created. So this one specifically is for total view. You can see we have Zillow down here in e-appraisal. So when the map field is filled out up here, these links will be automatically created and you can automatically get back some values or at least a rough estimate of what the value is on the property. Once you have a rough estimate of what that value is, you can put in some comp amounts down here. And by doing that, it'll give you an average comp right here. So if I give the total view and the others a few seconds to load, that specific property that was in the map address, it's already pulled it up. So the address right here, it's pulled up all the data that this has. It's telling us the numbers here. And if I go over to, let's see, Zillow is gonna have its number right here. So you can see here, it's got the images for Zillow and the numbers off of Zillow. And then the last item is gonna be e-appraisal. It'll bring up whatever values e-appraisal has as well. So that's all automatically created when you fill up that map address. That's going to be the offer section. Um, once you submit an offer, you're going to put in whatever actual offer is that you created. If you put in the square foot and estimated repairs and then your wholesale fee and then your uh, ARV as a decimal, meaning like 0.7, you could put in estimated repairs, let's say 10,000, and then wholesale fee, let's say 12. And if we go up to the square, let's see, the comp amounts, we've got to fill in the comp amounts, let's say 750, and I know these values are roughly right for this house, and as far as an estimated repair, obviously that would have to be a very small repair job on this big of a house, but let's just go with it. So 800, 740, and now it's averaged out whatever that was. You can see here now it's taken whatever your estimated repairs is subtracted away from it. It's taken away your wholesale fee and it's hit it against 70 cents on the dollar. And then it's given you what your rough estimate should be for an offer. And then you're going to go ahead and put in what you actually offered so you have it for your notes for later. Once it's under contract, you're filling out the different information here with who's the one that put out the uh, appointment or contract. Who's the one that's going to be selling if you have disposition obviously if you're just getting started most of the stuff is probably just going to be you yourself and i not a big deal but that's what that's there for you can put types of deals if you have yourself a checklist of different things that need to be done marking that property uh, when your buyer puts down any emd what kind of amounts and confirmed whether it happened are you doing an assignment or double close and then you've got your different things here with your scheduled closing dates with sellers and buyers inspection periods and then actual close date what you bought it for if you're going to rehab it what's the projected rehab budget and then when you sell it what you sold it for by doing that it's going to tell you roughly what you have as a pipeline meaning it's potential revenue if it closes out at the values that you put in what you bought it for what the repairs were and what you're selling it for it'll give you a rough estimate once you sell the property, put in sold price, and it will do, uh, you'll put in expenses and calculations, and it'll be able to do gross and nets and things like that. So those are things that it all has built into it auto the, automatically out of the box. Based on uh, the date that the item was created, date of appointment, date of offer and contract, it's going to start giving you estimated uh, values here or average values here from this one. So it'll tell you basically how long it took you from lead to appointment appointment to contract and contract to close it'll tell you and then from when it was created to when it was closed so you now know roughly how long it takes from start to beginning or start to end uh, to get a, a deal or a lead in and then close out that deal and then across the board after you start doing quite a few deals you'll be able to see basically on average hey I'm averaging you know 32 days or 40 days 
from start to finish or maybe four months who knows but that'll tell you what that is for each item and that's your property lead which is basically where you're going to probably spend i would say 98 percent of the time short of the cash buyer app um, and that's similar it's got the cash buyer app with information for your cash buyers uh, so that you can contact them now all this stuff is built on top of podio so as you um, have this set up you'll be able to download the podio app on your android or iphone and that'll allow you to have access to all this uh, data at any point in time on your phone or your tablet or anything like that and it is free podio allows up to 500 items so that takes care of kind of what the apps are uh, over here on the right side these are called report tiles on here at any point in time if you want to jump to our website and look at some of the services that we have as far as lists and skip tracing and beast mode and uh, repair estimator app and things like that uh, you can always click on this it'll take you over there otherwise here are some of the things that we have and if you click it it'll take you direct there as well um, and you can kind of see some of the different apps and things that we use in our own business by clicking on these different links and as you're working your items you have yourself a calendar and that'll be based off of the appointment dates and things like that that you fill in um, as you create your sellers it'll tell you kind of how many sellers you had by month uh, how many calls you've had by month by year things like that um, as you're filling in your offers and appointments you've got that calculated right there and then when you're closing deals it's going to start telling you how many closed deals you had again pipeline potential revenue once things are actually closed you'll have a monthly gross and a net here as long as you're filling in those fields and then down towards the bottom it's going to start telling you things like how many prospects or how many uh, property items did you have from beginning of the week current month current year things like that so good little free workspace gets you at least started have a database to put your information and in, keep it super simple you're just bringing in your calls if you want to you don't even necessarily have to bring your calls in you could just create the items for your sellers in the property app and then any cash buyers you have and then your network and um, that'd be the simplest part of it right there if you wanted to tag your campaigns you could so if i go back to the property app there's a campaign section right here so any campaigns you have in the campaign app right here the campaign tracker app when you're in the property lead you could tag against it so you'd be able to know okay this thing came from direct mail or it came from a high equity list or rvm or whatever you could tag against it based off of whatever they're calling from you would know what campaign it was all right if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out reach out to us at support at easybuttonrei.com or reach out to us on facebook of course you can always get on our website and reach out here as well any questions let me know otherwise reach out and sign up for the uh, free tools course and get into the free tools course and request that free crm right here all right guys take care